saunas and islands paired together like peanut butter and jelly. Hi, this is Hudson, and welcome back to the Sauna Trail podcast. Join us in our adventures as we share the story of how our family discovered the world of Finnish sauna. You might be wondering why anyone would do a podcast dedicated to something as commonplace as sauna. It's like doing a podcast about pants, dandelions, or garbage cans. Well, if you stick around, you might find out that there's more to sauna than you realized. Well, it's been a while since our last episode because we took a nice long summer break. So I need to refresh my own memory about where we left off on the sauna trail. So I think the previous few episodes included our first international sauna adventure in Thunder Bay. So if you haven't listened to that, go back and hear about our introduction to Finnish pancakes and sledding in our birthday suits and what we thought about that. Uh, Then Nala and Christopher had a daddy-daughter adventure of looking through and scanning some historical documents that were collected by Mati Kalps. Those were located at the University of Minnesota in Minneapolis. That episode is just full of interesting tidbits and photos that they uncovered in those archives. So now that we're kind of caught up, what has everybody been up to over the summer break? Well, not related to sauna. I've been reading Moby Dick. It's kind of slow, but it's getting going now. Related to sauna, I've practiced starting sauna fires, and I'm kind of running the show and done a few sauna fires myself. Is it just the sauna fires? No, other things like setting up the chairs, filling the cold plunges, sweeping the sauna before, prepping buckets, chopping wood, all that. Yeah, so Hudson's kind of learned that process before, and now Daniel's taking the reins. I actually haven't been doing much this summer. I've been doing a lot of reading, writing, and baking as well. What kind of things have you been baking? Well, I've been experimenting with some breads, which has been fun. Oh, that's interesting. Ducks eat bread. They do, they do. They like it. Well, this summer I was in a play called Every U.S. Election Ever. I was one of the narrators, and that was a lot of fun. As far as sauna goes, we had some really good family friends come and visit, and we sounded with them, and it was kind of sprinkling when we sounded, and that was that was nice. Yeah, I haven't been doing much either. I've m- been mowing lawns and reading, pretty much. What you been reading? I've been reading some Sherlock Holmes and adventure books. My side of the family had a family reunion at the end of June, so... Everybody was out here, and it was good to catch up with everybody. California, Chicago. We even got to meet some new future relatives, so that was fun. Yeah, and sauna-related, I've been sounding with my brother, Dan, and a few of other dudes in town. And I spoke at FinFest in July. Maybe I'll put together that talk and record it, and we can share that on the podcast And then we did some live streams for the Upper Bench and for the Sauna Trail. And those were a lot of fun. So we had a lot going on this summer. It was a nice break. We got to see family, also relaxing. And I'm excited to get back on the Sauna Trail. So today, we are heading north again to Canada. But this time, it's summer. And we get to stay on an island all by ourselves. Some of the things we did was we piloted a boat for the first time. We have a run-in with a possible bear. I think it was a bear, but some people say it might be a raccoon. We jump off a dock at night and get to cook in an outdoor wood-fired oven. Then towards the end, we'll share some photos and also, of course, have an analysis of the sauna that we used there as well. So, Christopher, how did you find this rental? Well, I had been looking for and collecting links of different sauna rentals. So I actually have a spreadsheet of saunas all over North America. And if anyone's interested, you can reach out and I can share that link with you. But I had found an interesting one in Canada that was on its own island. So, of course, I was intrigued by that. 
And so we decided to go check out that sauna. So the rental required us to stay. I think they required a seven day stay. So we were, we planned to be there for the whole week. It was a week in June. We left and we drove through Sault Ste. Marie. And I don't remember who told us, but I remember somebody saying that we should stop in at Pino's, but stop in on the Canada side. And I don't remember who told me this. So maybe I'm just making this up. Anyways, it was, it's a grocery store. It was a large grocery store and we're suckers for grocery stores in new places. Christopher will go up and down every aisle in a new grocery store while the kids and I follow along, wondering how much longer this is going to take. <laughs> or in an old grocery store. So Pino's was large. Do you remember anything specific from that grocery store? Yeah, as you might guess from the name, they had quite a bit of Italian influence. So they had a lot of imported and specialty Italian foods. It's a really nice grocery store. You should check it out. <laughs> so we drove to the marina, and we weren't sure what to expect. The owner said he was going to meet us at the marina and boat us to the island. I, I have no experience with boating. So to drive to the marina, I mean, I've seen them, I've driven by them, but I don't really understand how they work and so i know i know we got there a little early and we were kind of just waiting around for him to show up and i he eventually showed up we loaded up and he drove us to the island on his boat do you guys have any memories of that i know for me it was either the first or maybe second time that i'd been on a boat that i could remember and i was quite nervous i I didn't love it. <laughs> it wasn't a huge boat either. So you just felt very small on a lot of water. Yeah, and we're, like we've said before, we're city people. We hadn't spent much time out in nature, out in the woods, especially with the kids or on boats. So this is kind of a new experience. Yeah, it was it was different. I think we were all, I mean, I was a little nervous too, because the kids were small at that time. I think Becca was nine, and then the other kids were like seven, five, and then Daniel was three. So they were pretty little, and then, you know, mom's just anxious about kids falling out of the boat. But it was fine. Everybody survived. We made it to the island. Um, the owner let us unpack, and then he was talking to us about going to see some eagles, and he was really excited. He wanted to drive us on the boat to go spot some eagles. Which was fine, and I think we said yes because he was rather excited about it. So we got back on the boat, and he drove us around. And I remember thinking, when we returned the boat to the marina, we had to fill the tank back up. And we weren't sure how much that was going to cost. We weren't planning on using the boat very often, and he was driving us all over to go spot these eagles. And they were nice, they were wonderful, but it was just kind of strange to me. I enjoyed looking at the eagles. He would show us the eagle's nest, and we got a chance to see some of the other islands around the area. This island wasn't too far from the marina, so he took us out a little ways. The island is in Lake Huron in the Georgian Bay. One thing I do remember is when we went to go see the eagles, I don't remember seeing the eagles, but I remember he showed us this uh, fish finder on his boat. It was a little screen. It looked like a like a video game almost, and it showed the fish below the boat. It was kind of cool. So once we got our fill of spotting eagles, he drove us back or piloted us back on his boat, back to our island. Then at that point, he left on a different, I think he left on a different boat. He had to have left on a different boat because that boat was on our island with us. Yeah, maybe someone came and picked him up. I do remember he helped us get situated. There was a loaded shotgun in the living room that he took with him, which is good considering we had kids. Yeah. So the island was interesting. It had several buildings. So it wasn't like one building where we slept and ate and all that stuff. There was one main building that had the kitchen, the dining room, and a living space. Then there was another building that had the bathroom shower, and laundry. There was a third building where Christopher and I slept, so kind of like the one-bedroom studio. 
And then the kids slept in the fourth building, and that had two beds for the, the four kids. And then there was the sauna. And then there was the sauna, which was closer to the water. And then there was a dock where you could jump off and a diving board. It was interesting sleeping arrangements because we were all in different buildings. And I remember because the kids were little, sometimes they would have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. And so, again, I'm a city person and a little anxious about the kids being so little. So... I think there were a few times where either you guys came and knocked on my door to go to the bathroom or I actually just went and checked on you and then took you to the bathroom in the middle of the night. Because I remember the first morning we woke up, I think we had watermelon and we had to throw the garbage in a certain place. And the next morning we had watermelon rinds that were had been dug out of the garbage on the deck and there were like claw marks on the watermelon rind. So whether they were bears or raccoons, I don't know. We didn't see any during the day, but always in the morning, there was always some evidence of some creature on the island with us. And then one of the nights, um, I don't know if I heard the kids, I don't know what happened, but I remember I didn't have my glasses on and the lights were on in our building. So when I went to go open the door to go check on the kids, I saw something running and it looked big and it was running away from me again I didn't have my glasses on and it was dark outside but it looked like a small black bear to me but again it was dark I didn't have my glasses and I slammed the door shut and then after that I think we made sure that the kids doors were always locked and I think I remember you saying that you would hear Becca you heard scratching on the door sometimes at night yeah I heard lots of things I was quite freaked out but sometimes at night there would be like scratching and you could hear things walking around. And and one thing that really scared me actually was the loons. I hated the sound of the loons on the lake in the middle of the night or whatever. It scared me so bad. They were pretty loud. Yeah, they were really loud. These were all good stretching experiences <laughs> for us and preparing us for other parts of the trip where the one place where we went where the bathroom was outside and if you went to the bathroom at night you'd had to track through the forest to where the the open air privy was and i could hear wolves in the distance so this was good preparation and then the building that had the laundry the toilet the shower i remembered something about the toilet being a composting toilet and when we looked back at our notes we had on the calendar twice so it was like the wednesday and the saturday on our google calendar to remind us and the note said composting toilet 11 cups of dry stuff turn 70 times make sure it's aligned with the pipe test by flushing so we must have done that and i don't really remember doing that but it was on the google calendar and then when i read that i was like oh i think i think i remember christopher doing that and counting to 70. But it didn't smell. It was still nice. I didn't feel like I had any complaints about the composting toilet in any way. So we got to do some fishing. Was this the first time you kids fished? This wasn't the first time that we went fishing. We went fishing in Texas a while back before, but I do remember this was probably the first time we did like long fishing throughout the whole day. Because I think Texas, it was kind of brief. Okay, so you guys have been fishing before. We did actually catch some fish. Do we cook steak in the fireplace at this place? Yeah, yeah, and we may have cooked the fish there as well, but the steaks turned out pretty good cooking it on the coals in the fireplace. And then they also had a wood-fired pizza oven, and we did some pizzas there. And sausage. And sausage, yeah, in that oven. That was pretty fun. One of the evenings, the owner showed up unexpectedly. (laughs) And he was very gracious and kind. And he said that he had got some fish and wanted to cook it for us and share it with us. So he ended up cooking it in the kitchen with us and then stayed and ate dinner with us. And for a family of introverts, that was a little awkward. But he was so nice about it. And so I just, I couldn't fault him for anything because he was so gracious. 
and it was good. The fish was cooked. He cooked it up. I think he cooked it up on the stove. Like he didn't use like a the fireplace or anything like that. He cooked it right on the stove. But then I think he left us alone for the rest of the time after that. So do you guys remember the mayflies? Yeah, I do. I think we would catch them and like hold them by their wings and we caught like a whole ton of them. Yeah, those kept us occupied for hours. Like they would they flew really fast, but once you once you grabbed them by the wings, you could take them anywhere. They wouldn't move. They'd just be like stiff and we would put them on the table and give them names and torture them. I feel a little bad. <laughs> We, that's you girls, okay? I wasn't involved in this at all. So there was a south-facing window that all of the mayflies during the day were there all day, and they just it just covered the window. I don't think I'd seen anything like that before, and I didn't know anything about mayflies, so we had to, like, I had to look it up and be like, oh, these are mayflies. So that was, that was really cool. I think this is also the place where you kids learn how to play Chinese checkers. Do you remember that? I remember trying to learn it. I don't really remember how to play, though. I know how to play, but I don't remember it at that place. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed Chinese checkers. I don't remember how to play anymore, but it was fun while we knew. (laughs) Yeah. Then we did venture off the island on our own, which was interesting because we piloted the boat. So we took a picture of the knot that the boat was tied up by so that we remembered how to tie it when we got back. But we got on the boat. Christopher piloted this boat from our island to the marina. And then we got out, we explored. um, I think think that's when we went to a grocery store and we got stuff to make pizza, like the basil and the cheese and the dough and all that stuff. And then we went to Manitoulin Island, which... I didn't realize this, but it's the largest freshwater island in the world. So that was kind of fun. And then we walked up a fire tower, which I think we like to do, but also hate to do because we've got some people that are afraid of heights. So that was an adventure. Yeah, that was a beautiful area to drive around. I remember enjoying the island. And so then we returned back to the rental after that. And I think I had piloted a boat maybe with family members before when I was younger, but being the person totally responsible for it, it was interesting. Boats handle a little different than vehicles. And then there was an older couple who had stalled on the water, and so then we had to help tow them back. So it just kept pushing me out of my comfort zone even further. (laughs) But we eventually made it back to the rental in the island. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and start talking about the sauna. So like I said earlier, the sauna was set closer to the water. And then it had a little boardwalk down to the dock. And then the dock had a diving board. And the water was really quite beautiful. The kids loved jumping off the diving board. Yeah, the diving board was a lot of fun. I had to pressure several of the kids to jump in. I think Daniel was the only one I didn't succeed. But as a dad, I'm constantly pressuring them to get out of their comfort zone. It's a good balance to the mom nervousness and sense of safety. It's a good balance. So let's take a peek inside the sauna some. This is the hot room. You can see it's pretty decent sized. It's a pretty standard hot room. But it did have a sliding door, I think, which was rather unique. The top bench was probably a hair low, but we could throw water on the rocks, and it was a wood-burning stove. I do remember that I didn't feel super good after using this sauna. It kind of had weird, acrid air, and I think that is because there wasn't really any ventilation. And at this point in our sauna journey, ventilation wasn't on our radar. But the more saunas we used, it became more of an important thing for us. Let's go check out the changing room. It was pretty decent size with some hooks. And there you can see hanging on one of the hooks was a eucalyptus vita. And a vita, if you don't know what that is, is just a bundle of branches 
that people use in saunas to beat themselves. It kind of exfoliates and provides a nice smell. And so we brought that with us and we got to try that out. But then we also made some from some of the trees on the property. So I think we made birch and cedar. Yep, we did. The birch one, when we used it, smelled like green apple. And the cedar, what did that one smell like? Strawberry. Yeah, which surprised me. I As we used it, it was like, oh, this smells like strawberries. That's so strange. It was not a connection that I would have made. But it, that was fun to do. Yeah, it's still a skill that we need to develop. We're not very good at making them. It, it takes some expertise. And so as you come out of the changing room, it goes on to a boardwalk where you can sit and cool down or walk down to the water where they had the little swimming dock with a diving board. And so the kids, once they built up the courage, they dove off of there and even took some underwater pictures. They had a little kid's camera that could take pictures in the water. So we enjoyed that quite a bit. Although we tried that with night sauna and there's something about jumping into just a black void that's a little bit unsettling. Yeah, the I think the kids, it was after dinner. I think Christopher had sounded earlier. I think maybe I was cleaning up or something. So then I went to go do my sauna and I went to do it by myself. At this point, it was dark. So I, I got hot in the sauna. I went to go jump off the diving board and it was dark. And for some reason, like I'm under the water and it's dark and I just start freaking out. I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't know what's in this water. I can't see anything. So I like frantically climb up the ladder and get on the dock. And I'm like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. So I managed to calm myself down, go back in the sauna, heat up again. And this time I tried to get up the courage to jump off the diving board. I couldn't. So I just lowered myself down on the ladder, just really quickly dunked under and then climbed back up the ladder and just sat on the dock for the rest of the time. And then, and then I think the last round, I, I don't even think I went into the water the last round. It was so weird. It was so weird. I just like not being able to see. And again, you guys have all heard, I'm not wearing my glasses. So I'm already, everything is already blurry and I was just that third round. I was like, there's no way I'm getting in that water. So I just cooled off and then went inside and showered inside. Well, in your mind, your mind imagines giant Great Lake fish that are just want to nibble on your toes when you jump in. Exactly. Exactly. So I don't, I think maybe we sounded again at night together, you and I, Christopher. And I, I don't think I jumped off. I think I just did like the lowering myself down the ladder and coming back up. Cause even, even with you there, I still couldn't, I still couldn't wrap my head around to just, it's just water, Julie. It's okay. Well, and to be fair, that water was very deep. Like it, that lake went deep from what I remember. You were also very short. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And so Daniel didn't jump off of this one, but at a later sauna, he ends up jumping yeah. in the water. Yeah. The girls, we didn't have to coerce too much, but Hudson, we really had to push and push and push. And once he did it the first time, that was it. He was like, this was so fun. And he's just jumping off like the whole rest of the trip. He loved it. So that was pretty funny. But Daniel never did. Not this one, like Christopher said. So from this sauna, I started to learn that fresh air and ventilation were important and that I still need practice on my Vita making and that cool, clean, fresh water for a plunge is an excellent pairing with sauna. And this was kind of another unique setting in nature. Sauna is always best when it's set in a natural area. Well, should we look through some other trip photos real quick? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. So this first photo, there's nothing exciting in the photo. I just wanted to show, so that was the building that Christopher and I slept in. And if you look past the building, you see a green door on the left, and that's where the kids slept. So everything was connected by the, the boardwalk. All of the buildings were connected by the boardwalk. <laughs> <laughs> this this picture I just love because it's one of my favorites of Daniel. He was eating apple. And at this stage of his life, he hated taking pictures. So anytime I pointed a camera at him, he didn't smile. He would just make an angry face. <laughs> And then 
I really like this picture. It's it's the boys and I, after making pizzas, we took some of the charcoal and we rubbed it on our faces. Again, Daniel loves taking the picture. <laughs> so this is a picture of my skin after sauna. And at, the first time I saw this, I was a little bit terrified as to what that was, if it was a healthy, but I ended up finding out from people in the wood burning sauna group that that's normal. So if you're sounding and your skin does this, don't freak out. It's okay. <laughs> so it was a good trip up there. We we had a good time. And when we returned home, we saw this at our house. An empty gas container with a bunch of matches. Lit matches that had burned out. So you might someone might be terrified to return home and find something like that after being gone a week. But I pretty quickly put two and two together and figured that it was our friends who lived a few blocks away that they were doing a little prank on us. And so I decided to do a prank back. So I posted to Facebook a picture of this and said that we were calling the police, but I made it so that only our friends could see it. <laughs> Cause I knew that, <laughs> that the wife, that Martha would see it and she would kind of get freaked out that we were calling the police over their prank. So uh, I was able to prank them back. And, and she did freak out. I think she had Luke either call us or text us and be like, oh, that was us. But I think Luke knew that we knew it was them. <laughs> and so these are our friends that we kept inviting to sauna with us, but it never ended up working out. But We'll continue the story of introducing them to sauna in a later episode. Yeah. So what are what are some overall thoughts that you guys have about this sauna on the island? It was definitely a stretching experience as far as being in nature and animals and boating. I am glad that I experienced it. And it was cool to jump off a dock after sauna into very nice water. Yeah, I have similar thoughts as Becca. I don't think it was quite as scary for me just because I was younger and I didn't really know what was going on that well. But it was interesting being on an island, having to boat out there. And, you know, on most of our vacations, we drive around a lot at the place we are. So just kind of staying in one place was interesting. Saunas and islands paired together like peanut butter and jelly. I think being on an island all by ourselves just felt so luxurious. It was something that I'd never experienced before to have a place all to our own with no one else there. It was fun. I, I don't know that I would do it regularly because I think I like being on the mainland. <laughs> but every once in a while, I think it's a, it's a unique experience. And you do feel small. I think at night when I sat on the dock and you just it's just water and it's quiet. There's no city lights. There's no city noises. I think I'm reminded of how little I am in all of the universe and in God's creation and how beautiful it is and how fortunate we are to to get to have this experience. I was very thankful. Well, that wraps up today's episode. Thanks for joining us as we got back on the Sounder Trail. Next week, we'll share about our second trip to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. We stay at three different places and try three new saunas. If you haven't yet, join our locals community and say hi. It's free to sign up. You'll get regular updates from us. If you enjoy our content and would like to support this podcast, Locals has that option as well. The address is thesoundatrail.locals.com. We appreciate all of our supporters and fellow sound hounds. Our podcast can be found on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, and other streaming platforms as well as our website, thesoundatrail.com. New episodes release Saturdays, which is the traditional finished day for sauna, also called sauna paiva. We hope to see you on the sauna trail.